Well, good afternoon, everybody. I wanted to share a verse with you that really has spoke to me a lot in the last few years. And it was a verse in, in answer to questions that I've asked God. Lord, why have you allowed things in my life? Why have you allowed tragedies and trials and tribulations and circumstances in my life? You know, why do I have to go through suffering? Why do I have to go through these things? Why did I have to go through these things? And a verse that the Lord spoke so greatly to me, and it is to other people. I've had a few friends the last few days just really uh, send me this verse and tell them how much God has spoke to them about it. It is Romans 8, 28 and 29. And it says, and we know that God causes all things and that means the good, the bad, the ugly, the trials, tribulations, suffering, all of that. He causes all things to work together for good, for good to those who love God, to those who are called according. And in my New American Standard, his is italicized, but it is not in the original Greek, but it is implied his purpose. But it would say called according to purpose. For those he foreknew, that means that God foreknew. He knew those that would believe in him, that would believe in his son. He also predestined, and the words in, again, the New American Standard are italicized to become, which means they're not in the original Greek. So it would read like this. He also predestined conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. Now, when we trust and we believe in Jesus, we become his brothers and sisters because his, God, his father becomes our father. We are now uh, children of light. We are no longer children of wrath. Satan is no longer our father. God is our father. We are brothers and sisters with Christ. He is the firstborn among many brethren and brethren meaning uh, sons and daughters. But let's go back up to so there is a purpose. This verse in 828 says there's a purpose in our suffering. There's a purpose why we go through all things. And the purpose is the next verse. Those he foreknew. That's those that have come to trust and believe in Jesus. We've made a conscious choice to believe Jesus is who he says he is and he did what he said he would do. He also predestined. That means he had pre-established boundaries. He had already predetermined. And then the next word explains what was predetermined. Conform to the image of his son. So all the trials and tribulations and circumstances that we go through, the purpose is that we are conformed to the image of his mm -hmm. son. And that was what God had predetermined beforehand would happen, that we would be conformed to the image of his son. Now, what's super exciting about that, and you know, I love word definitions. The definition in the Greek, the word for um, this particular word con for conformed is somorphous. And in the middle of that is morph. And morph means form. It makes me think of the Power Rangers. Didn't they morph? And when my kids were little, they watched those. They morphed. <laughs> I think that was the Power Rangers. That's, that's the form they took on. So this is the same thing. It's the word in the middle of somorphous, somorphous is conform, is form. So it says somorphous in the helps word study, conform by sharing the same inner essence and identity. So what the, the verse had said, that those that trust and believe in Jesus, his sons and daughters, those that love God, that he predetermined beforehand that they would share the same inner essence and identity. We would share his inner essence, form, nature, identity, within us. You see, he made us alive. He made our spirit alive. He gave us a new spirit and he placed his life within us. Our spirit is our inner man. It's where we are righteous and holy and blameless and he lives within our spirit. 
Alexa, stop. I had it set on a five minute timer. I guess I'll have to go a couple more minutes. We share the same inner essence identity that was predetermined beforehand that those that believe in him would share that same inner essence and identity of his son. It says that conform to the image of his son. He lives within us. Christ lives within us. He booted out the sinful part of us, gave us a new spirit that he could live within He's not going to live where sin lives. Our spirit is sinless and righteous and holy, and he lives within our spirit. He operates in us from the inside out. We share his same inner essence and identity. It goes on to say, showing similar behavior from having the same essential nature. What does that mean? That we have the same similar behavior as the nature of, of Christ that lives within us. And what is that same similar behavior? What comes out of us? Well, I always think about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit is the, the simul similar behavior. When we have Christ within us, we are living from Christ within us. What does that look like? Well, the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's his inner nature within us. That's Christ in us, in our nature, our essence, our core, in our inner man. And that flows through us into others. It changes our physical things, the, the way that we physically act in life our physical behaviors in life. We don't try to gratify needs of the flesh. We, we live from the spirit instead of walking according to the flesh. We have a love inside of us that we can now love those that sometimes, frankly, we don't want to love, but we can now if we choose to. We have joy, uh, just abounding, exceeding joy within us. And that, that doesn't depend on circumstances. Because again, in life, there's trials, tribulations, and circumstances. We have peace. I lived in chaos most of my life, and my inner man didn't even know what peace was. And then I found that Jesus is my peace. He himself is my peace. I live at peace on the inside because I can trust the one who lives within me. Patient. Be patient. Be kind. Be good. The goodness and kindness come out of me. Faithfulness. We live by the faith of the Son of God who lives within us. We can be faithful because faith, the faithful one lives within us. And we can have self-control because we have a new self. And in our new self lives God himself. Isn't that amazing? Once you really understand that. So now hearing that, hearing those truths, and we read that verse again, and we know. That God causes all things to work together for good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. All those things that we go through, trials, tribulations, and circumstances, he causes to work together for good for those who love God. We love him because we know. We know who he is. We live from the fact that he is loving, kind, trustworthy, good, faithful. He is all of those things. He is all those things to us and in us. Those are called according to his purpose. The purpose is that we are conformed. We share the same inner essence and identity as his son. And we live from that. We have been transformed from the inside out. We live from this transformation. Now, sometimes it takes our soul a little while to catch up to that truth. Our mind, our will, and our emotions. But the thing is, He's never going to leave us. He's always living within us. He's always transforming us soulfully in our emotions, in our choices, in our thoughts. When we allow him and we're abiding in him and we're sharing this intimate love relationship with him and we are, he is feeding us and nourishing us, he's, we are feasting with him, then all these attributes of who he is in us comes out through us. That's how believers should operate in this world. It's about what he's done within us, who he is within us, 
who he is coming out into the world to love, to have joy, to have peace, to be kind, to be good, to share the goodness and the kindness of him, be faithful and be controlled because with kindness and goodness and love, we can do all that because of him that lives within us. We live by the faith of the Son of God who lives within us. You see both in those verses in Galatians 2.20 and in this verse in Romans 8.20, it talks about his son, his son. His son is life and light and salvation and, and victory and resurrection and the bread and the wine. He is all these things. And he has made a way, he's made a way that he can live within us. And that came through the cross, it came through death, it came through life and resurrection. And it came by his choice to do that for us. So live your life by the life that is within you. And know that he is working all things, all things to your good because you love him. And the purpose of that is that he comes out of you. He lives within you, comforts you from inside out and out of you. I hope you have a great, great Wednesday. Thanks for watching.